Good day and welcome to Inquirer Mobility. I'm your host, R.D. Lopez, and this is Auto Tips. But before we get started today, I'd like to send out a message from the entire Inquirer Mobility team that goes out to our brothers and sisters who've been severely affected by the recent storm in Rizal, in Marikina, and all the other places, most especially Cagayan Valley, where the Magat Dam continues to release metric tons of water on a per-second basis, causing lots of problems to the nearby community. So they do need our help. If you could just browse the social media, you're going to find lots of private sector organizations, non-government agencies, and of course the government agencies pooling their resources together to help out. And we can help out in any way, shape, or form. Any amount would go a long way and would be greatly appreciated. So let's do our part and help out. And on today's auto tips, we're going to be talking about current automotive features that you can do without. That's right. In the current landscape of the automotive industry, it is incredibly competitive. And anybody in the business of selling you cars will try to give you everything, anything and everything but the kitchen sink. Wait, some cars do have kitchens and sinks, but you know what I'm talking about, right? Um... Top of the line model always gets all these belts and whistles, all the tech features that do add up to the sticker price that you're going to be paying for, if not in cash, for three or five years. So, yeah. Automated, hands-free parking. Let's face it, we do a lot of things hands-free these days, and I do think that parking shouldn't be one of them. If by this time you're already going around weaving through traffic, uh, you know, brushing it up with crazy drivers in Metro Manila, going through rush hour traffic, and yet you need automated assistance and parking, then there's got to be a little bit of a problem there. That means you're not completely confident about your driving skills to be able to park precisely in a certain space, or um, you're not totally in tune with the dimensions of your car. And that means that you need to brush up with your driving skills for the sake of the others and mainly yours. With automated parking, you're going to need a little bit of a clear radius around that parking spot that your car automatically detected. That means um, it's a rare situation where you can actually use it. Mall parking, for example, where everybody's trying to find a little spot there. More often than not, there's a car behind you waiting impatiently to be able to get out of your way and find a spot for him or herself while you're negotiating automated parking. So, um, if there are obstructions like a car behind you or in front of you, then you won't be able to use that automated parking sequence. Or if it's in action right in the middle of it and um, a pedestrian passes by or the car behind you with the impatient driver sort of like nudges a little bit, then that would interrupt and stop your um, automated parking sequence. You're going to have to start all over again or you're going to be stuck in a... Um, I don't know, a compromised position in that little tight spot. And if you're not used to parking yourself, then that might be a little bit of a pickle a problem. Now, that intelligent automated parking system that's built in on that car or SUV you're looking at, with a little research I found out, would cost anywhere between 150,000 pesos all the way up to half a million pesos on the premium luxury levels. Now, in any case, it would still make up a big chunk of the total cost of that vehicle. Now, it may not always be the smartest thing to do to aim for the top of the line variant of that model lineup. Perhaps a better option would be aiming for the second at the top of the line because while it has all the essential features and high-tech accoutrement, so to speak, but without that automated parking feature, then you'd be saving a big chunk of money and still ending up with a totally cool vehicle in terms of performance and safety, etc. Um, and without that feature that you'd be rarely using anyway, even if you wanted to. Right? Now, if you've ever driven in a first world country like in Europe or the United States where the super highways are really super and the uh, freeways are like 10 to 12 lanes wide, then this next feature we're going to be talking about might be really useful. I'm talking about cruise control and adaptive cruise control. In the Philippines, where the expressways are three to four lanes wide on average at the widest, um, you're not going to be able to use cruise control in an extended period of time without being interrupted by somebody who's trying to overtake or somebody who's holding their speed below the minimum speed limit and usually on the overtaking lane. So not to be negative about our driving culture, but we kind of suck. 
<laughs> so this um, general attitude of trying to be ahead of everybody, trying to um, sort of like bend the rules all the time uh, and not really just comply um, makes some of these automotive features uh, next to pointless. It's no big deal though. And it does not cost a vehicle so much, as much as automated parking, to have it as part of the lineup of features that uh, is included in your modern car. So that's no big deal. But the sad part is, you know, I wish I could really use adaptive cruise control on a regular basis. Um, Mm. Now for this one, I'm sure I'm going to get a lot of flack from our driver enthusiast friends out there because, well, this feature you're going to be able to find on mid-level variant garden variety subcompacts out there, all the way up to, of course, performance, exotic cars, and, uh, you know, high-end SUVs, etc. I'm talking about paddle shifters and that they're not that necessary or essential as part of the features of a modern car if you're in the Philippines. Well, unless you plan to take your vehicle on a track on a weekend and, you know, rip it out and be able to, you know, really be in control of your gears, etc. And uh, make the most of the paddle shifters. But if you're just stuck in traffic, in horrid Metro Manila traffic or in Cebu or, you know, city traffic in the Philippines in general, then I don't know. Wouldn't you agree that paddle shifters are not that necessary? But... As they say, it's good to have them and not need them than the other way around. Plus, well, you know, they make you feel sporty. Well, the last one is kind of really... <laughs> Interchangeable ambient lighting. I mean, like, you know, who goes around saying, um, I feel a little bit like Periwinkle today. Oh, no, wait, wait, let's make that burnt sienna. Or, I don't know. What about um, mauve? <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sure not a lot of people do that, but it's not very often that you keep changing the colors of the interior of the car in terms of the ambient lighting. I mean, like, you know, understandably, if your car is equipped with different drive modes, like from economy to standard to sport, then it makes sense to have your ambient lighting change from, say, yellowish to bright red because it signifies that your car has transformed into a totally different animal. But, you know, mood lighting, well, it's no big deal. If it's there, it's cool. And there you have it, modern automotive features that we think that you can do without. For those features that don't cost an arm and a leg that you don't get to use anyway, that's fine. But those that are really expensive, they only get to use once or twice in five years, it's kind of painful. Anyway, let us know what you think on the comments section. Once again, this has been Artie for Inquire Mobility's Auto Tips. I'll see you in the next episode. Please take care. I'll see you.